flue gas analysis and range rating, putting the boiler into service mode. My name's Alan Hart and today I've got David here from Vicara Boilers. We've installed this boiler. I did a video on that yesterday. I will add a link below so you can see how we installed the boiler. Also, um, how, how the boiler works. So I'll put, that, I'll put a link below for that. In today's video, David's going to show us how to set it up with a flue gas analyzer. He's also going to show us how to how to do it in um, to set it on in service mode on low and high. He's going to go up through that for us. Also, he's going to show us how to range rate the boiler, which is very very interesting because what we what we uh, often find is people tend to fit really large boilers in houses and. The heating load is way, way too high. So Dave is going to go through that as well and show us um, how to reduce and how to set this boiler, uh, how to range rate this boiler. Um, also, at the end of the video, we had some questions in the previous video. So I'm going to, I'm going to go through some of them questions as well um, and see if David can answer some of them questions. So yeah. Pass you over to David. Thank you, Alan. Um, I'm going to show you how to bring the boiler into uh, high and low for service mode. I've got the boiler set up with our blue line analyzer here. The probe's already in the port. Um, so what we'll do is, first of all, wake up the screen because the screen goes into power saving when it's not in use. So any button will wake up the screen. Okay, the boiler has to be in standby mode for uh, flue gas analysis uh, that's symbolized by the four dashes this is the mode button if the boil is in hot water or hot water and central heating mode it won't go into uh, co mode so bring it with the press of the mode button into standby to enter uh, combustion analysis mode press and hold the two lower buttons on the right simultaneously for two seconds co combustion uh, analysis mode will show on the display. To bring it to maximum fan speed, press the up button until the, until the display shows and it will stop at maximum fan speed. Press confirm and the boiler will now run at maximum fan speed while we take the readings we need to take. Okay, we've got it into uh, High fire, the analyzer is taking a reading, and what we're looking for is 9% CO2 plus or minus 0.2%. So it's working its way up to 9%. 9% now, 9900 parts per million. Uh, that's well within our tolerances, so I'm happy at that. When you've got the boiler set up for uh, CO2, which is what we want you to set it up for at maximum, bring the fan speed to minimum by pressing the minus button here. Hold it until the uh, speed that's displayed stops at the minimum fan speed. It won't go past the minimum. When it's set at minimum, press to lock it. The boiler will now run at the minimum fan speed and you can uh, take a reading and make any adjustments as necessary. So we've got it working at uh, minimum fan speed or low fire. We've got it set at 9% uh, CO2 plus or minus uh, 0.2 of a percentage and the uh, parts per million are well within tolerance. When that's done, to cancel uh, flue gas analysis mode simply press the return key here and uh, flue gas analyze, analyze mode finishes uh, yeah. here's a little tip uh, sometimes you're trying to do flue gas analysis and the heating system the radiators are up to temperature because our boilers put all of its heat while it's on uh, combustion analysis mode into the radiators or the heating system to keep the boiler running, if uh, the system's hot and it won't stay in high or low fire, 
Remove the case from it. Drop the flap. The diverter valve is on the, it's the bottom right of the boiler. There's a little pin that holds a diverter valve motor on. Lever it off and loosen the diverter valve actuator. Now you can open the hot taps in the house and you're dissipating the heat the boiler is producing into the hot water section. So the boiler will stay running as long as you wish. I've uh, we've gone through a combustion analysis, how to get the boiler high and low fire, um, and how to dissipate the heat if the heating system's already hot. What I'd like to talk to you now a little about is range rating. Now the combination boilers are very powerful, and this particular one is 35 kilowatts, and that can uh, put 30 kilowatts into a heating system. Now. The average three bedroom semi detached house possibly would use would need between six and uh, ten kilowatts. Um, so the boiler is more powerful than necessary. We can actually tune the boiler, we call it range rating, we can tune the boiler to the output that that house actually requires rather than let it run at 30 kilowatts. If you let it run at 30 kilowatts, no harm will come to it but it will be putting so much heat into the house, the boiler will shut down and it will come back on again and then it will shut down. And cycling has a very small effect on efficiency. Uh, so let's avoid it. Okay, to range rate, there's a graph in the manufacturer's instructions. And what we'll do is I'll now take you through range rate in the appliance on the display. So the display is actually asleep, so I'll press any button to wake it up. Now, to get into uh, range rate the appliance, we have to go into what we call installer parameters. This is something that we don't want the uh, end user to adjust. First of all, we have to go into uh, parameter mode. This is the user's parameter mode. Okay, to range rate the appliance, what we must do is go into parameter mode. There are two levels of parameters, one for the user and one for the installer. To go into parameter mode, press and hold the menu button until the screen changes. This is the user's parameter mode or settings. We need to go into the installer's uh, sets of parameters. So while it's in settings, press and hold the menu button another two seconds. And it's asking now, PWD, it's asking for a password because we put these parameters behind a password. The password is actually 18. So using the up button, bring the display to 18. Press confirm. And we have a different, we have more parameters. I need a parameter set of three to do range rating. So I'll press uh, the button so we're into configuration and now I want to go into configuration and I want 310 so I'll press the up button to get to 310 so parameter 3 section 10 range rating so if I enter now range rating it set the fan speed set for 6900 rpm which will give you 30 kilowatts well we actually only, let's say we only need 10 kilowatts for three bedroom semi. By dropping the fan speed here with the minus button, now I know to 10 kilowatts we'll need a fan speed of 2800 rpm. Oops, went a bit far there. 2800 rpm. If I needed 7 kilowatts, I would choose a, a lower number. But let's say it's 10, 000, uh, 10 kilowatts. I've set the fan speed for 2,800 RPM. When I'm happy with that, press the enter button, and that's now locked. The maximum heating output, or the maximum output from the boiler uh, to the heating system of uh, 10 kilowatts. To leave parameters, press the return button here, and we're back into standby. So just to recap, what we've done 
we haven't turned the boiler off. All we've done is we've reduced the maximum power it will produce for central heating to the level that the property actually needs. In this case, we use an example of 10 kilowatts. And we've done it by uh, ad adapting the fan speed, reducing the fan speed, so uh, for central heating only, it will produce 10 kilowatts, but it will still preserve the maximum output of the boiler when hot water is called for. Using this graph, we can um, decide how, how much heat the property needs and then choose a fan speed that limits the boiler output to, that, uh, to the requirements of the house. Once you've set that uh, range rated uh, fan speed as we've just done, what we would ask you to do is go to the last page of our catalog, the manufacturer's instructions, and enter the details here because any, any engineer that comes in subsequently needs to know if there was an alteration uh, made to the output of the boiler. Benchmark is filled in exactly as you would normally um, and completed and signed but this bit uh, refers only to the range rating adjustment. Thank you for that David. Um, I've just got a few questions from the previous video. Alex has asked the plate, so the plate looks awkward to get out. Okay, uh, let's take the front off. The way I would approach it, I always try to do things the easiest way. I would take the uh, burner and train, uh, train, gas train out, which liberates the whole of the front of the boiler. Then move the condensate trap to one side then you've got this whole space in there and then there's two bolts one here and, and one here the plate then comes out through the front i would just mention it can't be removed from the right hand side it looks as though it can but it can't it's too deep but it can come out the side on the left or out the front Robert, Robert mentions plastic everywhere. Thank you, Robert. Yes, I'm asked this a lot. Well, it's plastic, it's glass, it's uh, plastic reinforced with glass fibre. It's a composite. We've used the same composite for 14 years. We don't get problems with it. It's lighter, it's more thermally efficient. It doesn't erode, corrode, or suffer electrolytic corrosion. Um, well, why would we change it? It works for us. We're very happy with it and it takes eight bar pressure. E. Andrew asks, yeah. how reliable are the Riello pumps? Uh, the Riello pump, this is a new pump on a new model. I can't give you a definitive answer, but of course they're tested to, destru to destruction and uh, endurance tests. All we ask is, it's the same with all the boilers, Give it a fighting chance, put it on a clean system and we've got a chance of making it last the life of the boiler many, many years. Jonathan asks, how long is the warranty? Thanks, Jonathan. Um, warranty is seven years uh, at the moment. The warranty links do change, but seven years at the moment. Fiverr Washer just says, cracking boiler. Great to see David on video. So <laughs> I can't put a face to the name Fiverr Washer. But uh, thank you very much. Colin Colin asks the PRV and the Schre uh, PRV and Schrader look a nightmare. Uh, no, um, first the uh, Schrader valve. I often use a extension piece for for charging vessels, but the valve is here, so I can get my hand in there, undo that, screw that on, and then my pump goes on the side. Uh, PRV uh, is just here, so I can I can pull that pin out by putting my hand in here. But of course, you can take the side cheek off and get to it completely from the side. Tim asks uh, pressure gauge. It looks like it's in a useless position. Uh, that's the manual gauge. The manual gauge is underneath, uh, so you can fill the system before power goes on, and you can see. Uh, system pressure. There is a digital display, it, it will display on the, on the uh, digital display and also if you're using RB Smart remote control 
you can see the boiler pressure and system pressure uh, on the room thermostat and on your app. So you can get the pressure from many places, especially if you use our B-Smart control. Jack just comments, he says that good to see other manufacturers up in their game. Uh, it looks a decent boiler inside. Very nice of you, Jack. Thank you. Um, Wayne asks, is there a torque setting for the nuts on the burner? There's a suggestion, uh, a, um, a recommendation of eight newton meters. It's a, it's a recommendation. And also, um, there's a sequence in which to tighten the nuts. It's, that's printed onto, onto the front of the burner plate. Um, Alexander asks, is the boiler heavy? Uh, the boiler alone is 37 kilowatts. As uh, kilograms, I beg your pardon. Is the wiring the same? As what? That's the question. Okay, well, the wiring is you get a metre and a half of three core cable and a three amp fuse to power the boiler. Um, you can use a standard uh, voltage free thermostat, you can use weather compensation and you can use open therm. Each of those have uh, terminal points inside the control box. So the wire is brought in through the grommets into the control box here. Uh, Gary, Gary mentions um, the threads on the connections underneath, they look quite short. Uh, that's something no one's mentioned before but I've been putting the boiler, they're standard threads we use on all the boilers, I've been putting them in for 10, 12, 10 years now, never really had any problems so far. And I think that's it for questions, thanks for that. Okay, pleasure. Thank you so much to David and Vicara for giving, giving us the opportunity to do these videos and also answering some awkward questions as well. Um, hopefully some of the trainees in the training group this this video should be really really good for you and hopefully we can educate people or help people to install boilers better range rate them and yeah and just generally do a better job if possible if you've got any questions if you've got any more questions then please ask them in the comments below and hopefully we'll be able to answer them questions for you as well Thanks for watching.